All right, welcome back everyone. My name is Pratesh here with Kaizen Crypto bringing you another video. So I hope you guys are all doing well. Thank you so much for joining me here today. In this video, I've got a few technical details I wanted to discuss with you regarding Cardano. So recently what we're seeing with networks like Ethereum especially, the transaction fees are on a gradual uptrend. And that's because there's more use and utility with things like DeFi actually happening on the network. So when we do see Gogan on Cardano, what does that look like for the transaction fees? I wanted to discuss that with you here in this video. Also taking a look at some of the larger stake pools now on Cardano have gotten to that point where they're approaching saturation. So what is saturation and how does that affect rewards? So we're gonna be taking a look at that. I've got a few tools pulled up here. This is adapools.org. We're gonna be taking a look at that and some of the different metrics that you can look out for if you're delegating to a stake pool. So if you're interested in that type of content, be sure to stay tuned. All right, everyone, so to get things started, if you guys do find some value from this video, please be sure to drop a like for me. If you do wanna stay up to date with relevant Cardano news and information, be sure to hit that subscribe button and click that notification bell so you know exactly when I post a new video. What we have here, we're taking a look at a blog post from IOHK's Lars Brunez, and he goes into detail into how Cardano's transaction fees work. So I wanted to go ahead and briefly touch on a few key points here in this article and then share with you guys some of my thoughts as to how this relates to what we're going to be anticipating coming up with the launch of Gogan. So people who run full Cardano nodes spend time, money, and effort to run the protocol for which they should be compensated and rewarded. In contrast to Bitcoin, where new currency is created with each minted block, in Cardano, transaction fees are the only source of income for participants in the protocol. The second reason for transaction fees is the prevention of a DDoS attack. It's a distributed denial of service attack. In a DDoS attack, an attacker tries to flood the network with dummy transactions. And if he has to pay a sufficiently high fee for each of those dummy transactions, this form of attack will become prohibitively expensive for him. So how do transaction fees work? Whenever somebody wants to transfer an amount of ADA, some minimal fees are computed for that transaction. In order for the transaction to be valid, these minimal fees have to be included. All transaction fees are collected in a virtual pool and then later distributed amongst participants in the Cardano protocol. So how are minimal transaction fees calculated? The minimal fees for a transaction are calculated according to the formula A plus B times the size, where A and B are constant and the size is the size of the transaction in bytes. So why did we pick this particular formula? The reason for having a parameter A is the prevention of a DDoS attack mentioned above. Even a very small dummy transaction should cost enough to hurt an attacker who tries to generate thousands of them. Parameter B has been introduced to reflect actual costs. Storing larger transactions needed more computer memory than storing smaller transactions. So larger transactions should be more expensive than smaller ones. In order to arrive at a particular value for parameters A and B, we've had to answer questions like, how expensive is one byte of computer memory? Or how many transactions will there be on average per second? How large will a transaction be? Or how much does it cost to run a full node? So we had to estimate the answers to those questions, but now that Cardano is up and running, we will be able to gather statistics to find more accurate answers. Now, how are fees distributed? All transaction fees of a given epoch are collected in a virtual pool. And the idea is to then redistribute the money from that pool amongst people who are elected slot leaders by the proof of stake algorithm during that epoch and who creates blocks. All right, very cool. So as far as the details talked about in this article, so they talk about the formula that they use to calculate the transaction fees. Now, what's gonna be very interesting is the transactions that most people are performing on the network now, it's really just a matter of sending and receiving ADA. There isn't really a whole lot of story behind the transaction uh, because we don't see smart contracts. So with Gogan being implemented on Cardano here in the next coming months, the transaction sizes are gonna be considerably larger because there's gonna be more data tied behind those transactions. So what does this do to transaction fees? So that is the question that I have for the community. I did post a poll on my Twitter as well. So for those of you guys who did engage, I do appreciate it. It's really interesting to know your thoughts. In my opinion, I think what we see going forward is that the constants as far as the fees in terms of the parameters A and B will of course remain the same. 
However, with the increase in the actual size of the transaction in terms of compute power that's required to perform those transactions, I think that is going to be the, I guess you could say it's kind of like the margin in which we'll see the transaction fees increase accordingly. So interesting to know about that. Let me know what you guys think about that down in the description. So I just wanted to show you guys this here. I've got a chart pulled up. This is showing the average Ethereum transaction fee. This is a historical chart. And what we're seeing is that recently we've seen a huge spike in the average transaction fees for Ethereum. Right now with so many things happening on the network such as DeFi, um, some of the things that come to my mind are like Uniswap, there's Aave, there's MakerDAO. There's so many different DeFi protocols I think I actually saw that the volume for Uniswap actually overtook Coinbase for the first time just a couple days ago. Really incredible to see that. So I just wanted to go ahead and point that out and let you guys know my thoughts regarding that. I do think that we will have an increase with the transaction fees for Cardano as we see the transaction sizes increase. However, I don't think it's gonna be anywhere near to that of Ethereum as it comes to paying extremely high gas prices because of the amount of activity we're seeing on the network. So just wanted to share that with you guys. I think it's pretty interesting to see as we're anticipating all of these developments happening in the very near term. Next up, I wanted to go ahead and share with you guys some details regarding saturation levels. What we're seeing right now is that many of the larger stake pools are reaching a point where they've become saturated. And how does this affect the rewards for the delegators? So I wanted to go ahead and say a big thank you to Be Kind Stake Pools for providing this article. This is going to be on their website. I will be sure to link this down in the description. If you guys do want to check it out, I would recommend it. It's pretty insightful and he actually provides some scenarios. I wanted to just go ahead and briefly talk about a few key points and maybe touch on a few of those scenarios. And then I just wanted to jump over to one of my favorite tools as it comes to finding out the metrics for stake pools. That's gonna be adapools.org. So we're gonna be taking a look at that. As far as what he's highlighted here, so the saturation level is a measure to support the decentralization of Cardano. It prevents pools from becoming too large in regards to the amount of stake that's delegated. Being aware and knowing about the influence of the saturation level is essential when delegating ADA to a pool. The saturation level is the point in which the rewards of the pool are being capped. The saturation level can be calculated as follows. So you would take the total ADA supply, divide that by the K value. The K value is a blockchain setting where K is the number of pools based upon which the saturation level is calculated. So for example, the total ADA supply, let's say is at 31.7 billion, you would take that value and you would divide that by the current K value, which is set at 150. And what this would provide is the output of 210 million ADA. So if a stake pool were to reach that level, if the stake pool has 210 plus million ADA delegated, that would mean that that stake pool has reached that point where it has become saturated and you'll see that the rewards are capped at that level. Very interesting to see that. He did also provide some insight and some scenarios on what that would actually look like. So let's say for example, a pool is exactly on the saturation level with the total amount of 210 million ADA delegated. The pool also produces 100 blocks out of 100 expected blocks in a certain epoch. So it has a performance of 100%. At this point, the saturation level has no influence on the rewards. The pool has a 100% performance and it's exactly on the saturation level. So full rewards will be paid out. Because the pool was online, it was able to mint all the blocks that it was assigned, even though it's at that point where it's reached that 210 million ADA, where it's at that saturation level, you won't see any type of decrement or decline in rewards because it's, not past that saturation point and it's still got 100% performance. Now in the second scenario, he talked about that the pool has a total amount of 220 million ADA delegated. So it's just over that saturation level. Now because the rewards are capped at the saturation level of 210 million ADA, that means that the additional 10 million ADA, no rewards will be paid out. So this means that the actual performance of the pool is below 100% seen from a rewards perspective. So even though that the stake pool was minting blocks, it hit 100% performance from that perspective, because the pool was past that saturation point, you're gonna actually see a decrease in the rewards 
even though the performance was 100% because that pool was over that saturation level. So really interesting to see that. I hope I did do a good job of explaining that. Uh, I know it can be pretty technical, so I would recommend that you check this article out. That way you can actually see some more relevant examples and what to look for when it comes to saturation. I wanted to go ahead and share with you guys this as well. This is adapools.org, one of my favorite tools brought to us by the Cardanians. So big thank you to them. They provide a tremendous service to the community. I do also like to recommend pooltool.io from Stakepool Love. So definitely check those two resources out. Uh, I think you'll find a lot of value from that. As far as how I like to look at these different websites, what we can see here if we scroll down, we've got a list of all these stake pools that are available to delegate to. Now what you can do is you can actually sort these stake pools based on the amount of stake that's delegated to the pool. Easiest way to do that is at the top if you click on stake, when you click on it one time it'll actually sort it according to the lowest amount and if you click on it again it'll show you the highest amount. What we can see here is that the stake pool currently with the most stake is an IOG pool. So IOHK1 currently has a stake of 260 million ADA and we can see with this layout they've got a really nice visual here. This bar is color coded red and we can see it's pretty much maxed out. It shows a saturation point of 123%. So what this means essentially is that any ADA that is currently delegated to this pool, the rewards are actually going to diminish the further away that the pool gets from that saturation level. So like in the example we were looking at before, the pool was at 220 million ADA. It was 10 million ADA away from that 210 million saturation level. The rewards are actually gonna go down based on how far away or how much more ADA is delegated to the pool from that saturation level. Despite the performance, we can see here that the pool is producing blocks um, you know, it, it could have 100% performance, but because it's well past that saturation level, you will see those rewards decline. Those are just some of the things I like to look at. Of course, you guys know this is not financial advice. Please be sure to do your own research when it comes to any type of investing or in this case, delegating your ADA. I'm not recommending any specific pool. I just want to put this video out there to hopefully help you gain a better understanding of what to look for when it comes to delegating to a pool. So those are just some of my thoughts. Please let me know what you guys think. Go ahead and let me know any comments or questions down in the comments section below. Hopefully you guys did find some value from this video today. If you did, please be sure to drop a like before you go and I will see you all in the next video. Take care.